game number one. Well, I guess there's only game number one. I'm so used to saying that. But it's Gamma Bear Sen against Mao's Morrow. And we're over here on dual site. So the winner of this will get third seed. Loser of this gets fourth seed. Not a big deal. Too much. But, you know, when it comes down to it, mathematically, when we're looking at the whole season, third seed will play mathematically a, a weaker player. And fourth seed will mathematically play a stronger player. Not sure if it always makes sense. You know, it's hard to really give a value to players these days uh, just because styles and, you know, you can't really put them on a linear scale, in my and, opinion. And matchup, you know, some people are better yeah. at certain matchups than others. So you might want to play, like, for example, a TVZ as opposed to, you know, maybe a TVT. So, you know, for there's sure. a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more variables involved. So, it's, yeah, it's not quite as cut and dry as, like, oh, this is the third best person. This is the exact fourth best person. Yeah. But. Uh, but it will affect, uh, you know, who who they end up playing, and uh, therefore, you know, it is an important match for them. Yep. So we can over see over here in the purple Terran, we have Mal's Morrow. Now, you normally he is Zerg, but for uh, his versus Zerg matchup, he does go Terran, which is... Indeed, man. You know, he used to play Terran. Kind of crazy, man. It's awesome is what it is. He used to play Terran, then he switched to Zerg. Uh, but he still goes back to Terran because he hates ZWZ, so he likes to play TVZ. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really awesome because it gives him this uh, kind of unique perspective on the matchup where he sees TVZ and ZVT, you know, he sees both sides of the matchup at a competitive level. Uh, and I feel like that really gives him the upper hand in this. Uh, you know, he just always knows these timings, knows exactly what he doesn't like, you know, playing up against uh, from the opposite end of the matchup. And it looks like he's just going for a single proxy barracks. When I first saw that go up, I thought maybe he'd go for like a proxy two racks. But no, he threw down the gas as well. So why do you think he uh, proxy that barracks, Andre? Do you think maybe he's just going to do that like one marine, one bunker kind of uh, early aggression? or? Well, for sure, I know he knows that Sen is going to see this. And I think it'll trigger him to over defend possibly. And little things like this, like just add into the mind games of... of you know, when you're playing, especially against really, really good players that understands timings, that understands exactly where everything should be. This barracks is out of place. And right now, Sen is thinking, oh my god, this might be a double proxy barracks. I have to be very, very careful. Yeah, that is a good point. Uh, you can see he's, he already pulled uh, two drones going after that SCV. He's just sending them down in the natural now, though. Uh, just wants to be ready, of course, in case any bunkers start getting set up. Uh, so you can also be able to set up a uh, you know, oh, spine collar wow. for these two. Nice. Lifts the barracks. He uses that for the upgrade vision. Now he's going to get a really, really early Overlord kill. This is going to hurt for Sen, man. Uh, look at that. He, is he going to get it? Oh, he gets it right before, uh, you know, right as that hatchery is hatching. So that means that Sen is not going to be able to start that second queen just yet. Uh, and then, uh, you know, he's going to be supply blocked here for just a moment. Look at that. He does start the queen, but he uses the double extractor trick. Oh, that is, uh, that is pretty cute there, man. That was some crazy footwork, man. That's really cool build, in my opinion. Um, just putting out the barracks. Now we know <laughs> it was actually for killing that one overlord. Yeah, that's just so sick. So man. sick, dude. so far ahead. Uh, just knows that, you know, that's where every Zerg is going to want to send their overlord with that upper ground area. Uh, and Sen, you know, he just fell right into his trap, man. I know, man. He's sending that overlord over there. The overlord's like, oh, my God, dude, where's Ad Admiral Akbar when I need him, man? Uh, I'm just being flown right into those barracks. This is going to be awful. Uh, definitely heard him on this early game. And Amaro, of course, just jumps straight into his command center. So he's just going for a pretty early expansion here. But of course, he already has the tech lab, and he put it onto a factory. So perhaps could rush up Blue Flame here. Could Oh, never mind. I was about to say Orc could be um, you know, tanks. But no, he's just going to switch these buildings off, it looks like. Uh, so he just wants to start getting those upgrades for his infantry and uh, pump out a couple uh, Hellions yep. from that reactor factory. Very standard here in TVZ. Yeah, and I like it so far. Um, really quick, interesting to note, Morrow's hotkeys are really cool. He actually has all of his macro in the beginning with the scout at number one, and then his units will go five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. And that's a style that, you know, um, it, it actually reminds me back in the Brood War era when this was, like, just coming out. Normally, we see units one through three, one through four, things right. like that. But Morrow completely replacing everything, prioritizing, I guess, your macro first and then your units. Now look at what Sen is doing, man. He's got the Roach Horn about to complete. Now do you think he's actually going to make a whole bunch of Roaches and go for a really big uh, attack on the front of Morrow? Or do you think he's just using these defensively against the Hellions? I'm not sure. They might be just defensively. But, um, you know, if we saw him defensive, I feel like he would pull off gas pretty soon. 
He is going up into a lot of gas. Well, there you go. Seven roaches out in the way, and he's still making gas. So I do think this will be some sort of very, very huge aggression. Yeah, he's just going to try to counter this build. I mean, so many Terrans will go for this reactor Hellion expansion, and it can leave you a little bit open to some roach play. Uh, you know, Hellions and Marines, neither one of them are all that effective against roaches, uh, just not really cost effective. So there, uh, he's actually seen the roaches. We'll see how he actually defends. I would expect him to maybe start making some marauders. We do see one queued up uh, from that barracks. He's just going to... Uh, uh, finishing up that marine first and there's the bunker on the way on the upper ground so looks like he might just go ahead and abandon his expansion down here uh, at the natural and uh, you know just defend his ramp I think that's a smart move I don't think he would have been able to defend the natural all that easily and I like that he sent those hellions down there man so he might just be able to go for a counter attack yes. while Sen is uh, you know got his pants down now what this counter attack will do is let him know if there's any incoming zerglings as well or if there's some sort of uh you know, of macro play. Also, he will be able to threaten a little bit, but he does have control of the Zelmaga Tower, so it's looking really good for him. Actually, these Zirklings are going to spring out into action. Mara will see it, and the Roaches are approaching that, that front. Yeah, he's got to be careful. They went over towards those supply depots, but he sees that there's actually a bunker <laughs> with a Marauder in it. Oh my uh, gosh, these uh, Hellions, oh. man. He's got to be careful that he does not get these surrounded right now. A couple of them are going down to send. Oh no, a Miss Micro sends that Hellion right up against that wall there. Gets killed off pretty easily. Now he's just down to that one Hellion. Uh, Mara's in a lot of trouble here, man. He hasn't done that much damage. He's had his expansion denied, and Sen is just looking uh, like he's in total control of this game. Yeah. Um, well, Sen has map control for sure. Income tab, let's go ahead and look at that. 36 to 34, so they're quite even. Of course, uh, we don't have a an expansion coming out for, or for uh, Marl anytime soon, just because it's being denied. But these medevacs are out here, and that will give him a little bit of space. Hopefully, he can just start to push down there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised that Sens is being a little inactive with these links, just leaving them out in the center of the map. But of course, they are so speedy. If he sees units move down the ramp, he could bring those over there. But I would expect he'd want to have them in place to defend those roaches in case a whole bunch of infantry just sims down and starts picking them off. But oh, th there we go. He's now bringing them over. Uh, but this deny of the expansion from Morrow is causing him some huge problems right now. He doesn't even have it landed to be able to drop mules, so he's at over 50 energy right now, unable to use that. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, Sen is just is getting further and further ahead. I would expect uh, that, you know, once he... You know, let's go of this. Uh, let's go of this contain. He'll probably go ahead and take a third. I mean, he already has his lair halfway done. So, uh, do you think he's just going to rush up to Muta here and really punish Morrow since Morrow has to over uh, commit to be able to defeat these ground units? You know, I've been a huge proponent for Zergling, Baneling, Roach on this map. I really think it's a great way to start out. Get your third. Um, I, I think you know, Sen will stick on this type of play. We do see him getting a Baneling nest, and here we go. Morrow is actually pushing out. A lot of Marines stimming out. And Sen knows it's just too much. He has to back up. These roaches just get completely decimated. And the Zerglings are just going to run around. Are they going to go for the counterattack? It looks like they might. Uh, yeah, there he goes. He's going straight in here. And uh, Maro's units are a little bit out of position. But he sees it with that one Hellion. Oh, but he doesn't have the full wall off. Of course, the wall from the upper ground does... Uh, you know, l uh, raise itself, and he is trying to pick off some of these SCVs, just because it looks like uh, two or three there. Uh, not able to do as much damage as he probably wanted to with all of those Zerglings he just sacrificed. Uh, so that's actually pretty big, because right now at this moment, uh, you know, as a Zerg player, when you're trying to rush up to Muta, uh, you don't want to be, you know, having to make all those links right now. Uh, you know, he has to rebuild those, because since he just lost them with sure. that counterattack, wasn't able to do much damage with that. And that is going to, you know, just kind of delay, uh, you know, how many Mutas he'll be able to make, delay his third base. Uh, delay his drone count, but he does have quite a few links ready to go here. Uh, and he's just at 0-0, zero, zero, but he has plus one carapace about to complete, so that will help him out quite a bit. This is a very dangerous timing here. Centrifugal Hoax is not yet upgraded. Big Stim comes out, and I don't know if Sen wants to fully engage on this. He only has really Banelings, and Marines just eat, uh, or excuse me, he only has Zerglings. Not enough Banelings. Can he target down the Banelings? No, he does not. And the Banelings actually splatter across this tank, which is the wrong thing to fire upon. And, man, he attacked 10 seconds before plus one carapace was about to complete. Oh. So that would have been the best timing for Sen to wait for, especially since he's fighting against 1-0 Marines. Instead, uh, he ended up losing all those links uh, and the Banelings, man. So he's actually in a bit of trouble here. But, uh, you know, the Spire is done. We'll have to see how quickly the Muter's going to pop out. For now, he's still making nothing but Zerglings here. Um, so, uh, you know, this aggression from Morrow is really delaying Sen's uh, Muta play. Yeah. And he's up to 900 gas right now, so he really wants to be making those Mutas. Now it doesn't even have the larva available, so we can see only making three Mutas right now. And he's a uh, supply block. There we go. Eight eight Mutas are uh, on the way finally, but uh, that was a great play by Morrow, just delaying yeah. everything that Sen was trying to do. You know, I haven't been a huge fan of these delayed Mutas. I know it's uh, it's been getting a little bit more popular these days. 
the 13-minute uh, muta timing around there when you get your hatchery first and it just delays your mutas that much. Uh, you normally are able to get a faster third, though, and we don't see that at all this game. Um, so it's really going to hurt Sen later on, especially with these upgrades coming out. 2-1 is being researched. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, because of the map, uh, it's just really difficult to take that third, so he doesn't want to do that. But he's going in for the engage right now, sending in all of these units. Bandling, oh, almost gets a good connection, but not quite. Mita's trying to pick off that tank. Oh. He does get the tank, but he's got to be careful because the Marines are still alive for Morrow. These 1-0 Marines doing so much, and I love his continued upgrades, man. With the double eBay, he's got 2-1 a, a already halfway done, and Sen's only uh, upgrading one at a time with that one Evo chamber. So yep. Uh, he's going to be at 1-1 against 2-1 Marines, soon to be the afterwards, you know, 3-2 uh, against maybe he'll have like 2-1. So uh, Maro is going to get ahead, uh, you know, into the later game, uh, but it's all going to come down to, you know, who's able to defend their third a little bit better. They're both expanding kind of in the same direction towards the top left of the map, and that's going to create like a really high pressure zone up there where they'll just be extremely aggressive against each other, you know, trying to put pressure on the, their uh, opponent's third as well as defend their own third, but he's got to be careful with these meters in the center of the map. Oh my god, no, what? He flies right over all the Marines. Oh no, he loses all Almost every single Mutalisk without doing any damage. That could be game losing, Andre. Dude, that was, I was just about to say, that is game ending right there. To lose that many Mutalisks, you just, you basically say, I can never harass you. As if the upgrade advantage for Morrow wasn't enough. Sen donates all of his Mutalisks all the way over. And this is just a bad situation for him. Where does he now commit his gas? Does he try to get more mutas? Or does he just try to defend and get more banelings? Either way, it's a bad position. Maro is going to press on his advantage and take out this third. Yeah, look at that. Immediately canceled. He knows there's no way he can possibly defend this. He's sending his mutas over to possibly harass the third or the natural here. Uh, actually, just, nope, sends them back. Uh, of course, uh, Maro has really good map control. He's holding, uh, he was holding both on all the towers, but of course, Sen is going to go ahead and take that bottom one. Uh, but mutas are going to fly over towards uh, towards this area between the natural and third. Actually, one tank there, but there are marines in a, in a bunker. Oh, he's got to be careful, man. Uh, sends a uh, muta control. You just lost a, another muta just having it over that bunker, but right now he's surrounding this tank with Lang. Might be able to pick it. Oh no, what? Doesn't actually do the last amount of damage. There we go. Picks off that tank. But look how low that muta count has gotten oh yet again, God. man. He's down to two mutas. He was just at what, like 10? And yeah. then he just lost another eight. And think about how much damage he did. He killed one siege tank. Yeah. That's he, it. He's he's just been You look at the units lost tab, it's absolutely disgusting. Oh man. That's all you can do is sigh, right? <laughs> yeah, thirty seven hundred. <laughs> it's just it's too much at this point. Yeah. And you know, Zergs can never, well, don't get me wrong, they can be like that, but you need a massive economic advantage to be like that. Right. It has to be like, oh, I'm on my four base because I had mutas and I got up to four base versus your two base. Yeah. When it's a, a, a three base Zerg against a three base Terran and you just got his third, I don't think it's going to work, but I mean, this engagement right now, he's doing he's doing pretty well. Bane is trying to get in here. Good Marine split so far. He's not taking too much. Oh, great target firing on those Banelings. That was fantastic. And Maro is going to keep all of these Marines alive consistently throughout this game. Maro has just had such clean control. Yep, and now finally Sen able to get his third base over here in the 6 o'clock position, but I don't think it'll be enough. I mean, Morrow has had his third for so long, it's been very well situated, and here he goes, trying to bust up on his opponent's third. Banelings are being made. The Mutas again are being flown in the middle of the map and being caught out by these Marines. The Marines are pushing forward. Does he have any tank support? No, but I don't even think he needs it. Banelings are trying to connect, but they're going off creep, and that's the worst possible thing for them. Yeah, man, it's not going to work out well for them, especially fighting against 2-1 Marines here uh, with 3-2 now finally on the way. Look how low that Muta count has gotten again. Sen just at 1-1, of course. He has 1-2 on the way, so we'll have that to help him out uh, before 3-2 is going to be done for Amaro so he can even himself up. But uh, there it is. The GG well played gets thrown out.